everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Room 214 Live, the show on how to grow with marketing. My name is Jason Cormier. I'm coming to you live from Boulder, Colorado, and I'm a co-founder of Room 214. Uh, and with me here, I'm honored today to introduce James Clark, my co-founding partner. Honored back. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start just with a quick story. Uh, when I was in the U.S. Navy, I remember a senior officer once said to me, uh, Jason, natural leaders will emerge. Uh, but in my experience, what I found is a lot of natural leaders um, aren't necessarily good ones. Uh, you know, the reality is that all of us are leaders to some extent. Each of us are leading our own lives. Uh, and so I just wanted to touch on leadership a little bit um, and, and hopefully impart some uh, tips uh, specifically with vision that will be helpful for, for all of you today. Uh, over the last 12 months, uh, our little company, Room 214, has been featured as a best place to work in, in the United States. Um, and that's listed in Inc. Magazine, Outside Magazine, and, and Ad Age as well. Uh, and so when I think about like what got us here, by the way, I will just humbly say we make plenty of mistakes on a regular basis. Uh, but when I think about what got us here today, and more importantly, uh, what inspires us for the future? Uh, James here, I know, has a one-word answer to that. And, and what is that answer, James? It's vision. <laughs> it's vision. And mm -hmm. so vision means a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, I would love for you to share a little bit about, uh, to start, what a vision isn't. Yeah, it's important to know the difference between vision, mission, strategy, plan. Uh, what, a, what a vision is not it's not a roadmap of how to get somewhere. Uh, and so I think that that's one of the critical things to uh, consider when you're writing a vision is that what you want to be able to do is, uh, is go somewhere into the future and have an arrivable point. Uh, so that is a vision. Uh, now a mission uh, is more likely to state, which is also another difference. A mission is something that um, is you'll never achieve. And I always remember it by thinking of the terminology like mission-based organizations. And so there can be nonprofits and their mission might be to end world hunger. Uh, well, the reality is you're never going to achieve that. Uh, it's a wonderful and beautiful mission. Someone will be hungry every day. Uh, but that is a mission. A mission is something that uh, you can rally behind and everyone understands what your cause is. A vision actually puts a point in the future and says, this is where we're going to go, and this is, and this is what we want to achieve at that point in time. So, right, and, and I think people get hung up um, on the how as well. Yeah, what happens a lot in visioning uh, is, even when you're writing the vision, sometimes you get trapped into thinking, well, how's this going to happen? Uh, and we like to talk about, if you start thinking of how, uh, you've essentially popped the vision bubble, and you're out of the vision bubble, and now you're in strategy. Uh, because the how is like, how are we going to achieve the vision? Um, so typically the how comes about when you have a little bit of fear and uncertainty, some doubt comes in and you start asking how, and you just need to let the how go. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need to stay in the vision bubble and really focus on, uh, on that point in the future of describing where it is you want to end up. And so uh, we know also that, and we focus on this a lot in our own process, there's really four aspects to creating an effective vision. Uh, one is that it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, and so saying something like, we have a vision for you know making $10 million. Um, for a lot of people, uh, that's just not inspiring. Uh, another thing is it needs to be strategically sound, right? It actually has to be achievable. Um, it has to be communicated uh, and it has to be documented. Uh, and so to, to get straight to the practical, uh, maybe you can just talk about how do, we, how do we write a vision? What does that look like? We write lots of visions, by the way. You can write a, a week-long vision. You can write uh, what we wrote, an eight-year vision, actually. Uh, in 2012, we wrote a 2020 vision. Uh, and anytime you start, you know, you really, it's really, you sit down. Uh, and one of the things is, I think the key thing is, one, you have to believe in the process. Uh, you have to believe in visioning. Uh, if you believe in visioning, you can move through uh, this process and you can stay with it. Uh, when, from the practical standpoint, uh, one of the first things you want to do is write down a list of prouds. And so you yourself are going to sit down, uh, probably at a keyboard, and you're just going to write what, you, what you're proud of. Like you could be, you can write a list of prouds of things that happened that morning. You made your bed, yeah, you folded your laundry, uh, I achieved. And it's like whatever you want uh, can be like a list of prouds. Uh, you do like 10, 12 of those, kind of get through that whole process. Um, and it puts you in the right mindset of like, hey, you know, uh, positive, you can achieve things. 
Uh, so you really want to uh, set yourself up to know that I can achieve things. And so even the smallest prouds are, you know, ladder up to uh, larger, bigger prouds. Uh, so that's one of the what's one of the key things you do. The other one, uh, uh, point two, from a practical standpoint, is what we call hot pen technique. And so I like to at least set aside 20, 25 minutes, um, depending on actually on the length of, of the vision. When we write our big visions, you know, I usually kind of do it at night with a drink in hand, just so in case we, you know, in case it get grooving, no one's going to bug me. Uh, but oftentimes you might be working on a week long project or a year or something like that. I usually like to put together 20, 25 minutes. Um, and, you know, in that process, you know, give yourself, uh, you know, some time just to, you know, start writing. And what happens is in the hot pen technique is you just keep going. Uh, try not to let the pen off the paper or the fingers off the keyboard. Um, and so uh, one recommendation uh, would be just to have some form of mantra when you get stuck that you repeat over and over and over. Feeling groovy, feeling groovy, feeling groovy, whatever it is you want to do. Um, because eventually you're going to pop out of it. Uh, because you know, a lot of times, I got to tell you, when you first start writing vision, the how comes in a lot, uh, and you get concerned, you get to, you get distracted, or uh, a lot of people are just like you know, you're staring at a blank screen. But watching something move and watching the brain work kind of gets you through that process, you know. So using hot pen. And so you start, um, you know, back to that first list of prouds. You're really getting into the mindset of being very positive, mm -hmm. uh, and then you're picking a point in the future. Right. And, and I'm glad you did bring this up. You touched on this a bit. A vision isn't necessarily this huge, like, where will the company be in five years? It could be a very personal thing. Uh, there could even be a vision for a project, uh, which might mean your vision is one page. Right. Uh, and so you pick a point in the future and you're really, you know, you're really talking about um, what is what does that look like? What does success look like and how do we feel um, and how does that impact the staff? So you do the hot pen technique, you know, you splurt out all this writing. What comes next? Well, you share it. I mean, you share and you get feedback. And so part of that process uh, when you're writing the vision uh, is to really put yourself in the future um, and try to think of it as a documentary. Uh, you could be even saying, you know, hey, you know, uh, it's 2025, maybe a particular date in 2025. Uh, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm watching it. Uh, I'm watching it snow outside and I'm super proud of the meeting I just exited and it was all about X. Mm -hmm. um, so imagine writing it in a narrative format like that because the reality is that what we would like to do is share it. And when we say share it, we think there's a real powerful power in the human voice and the individual sharing it, coming from them. Uh, so uh, the role of the people who are now listening uh, is to give feedback. And that feedback um, literally is what is inspiring uh, what's missing and are there any clarifying questions? Um, and so yeah, the feedback is never critical. Uh, so you don't want to be like, oh, I didn't quite understand that or I didn't quite like that. Um, because typically you're drafting visions together. There could be two or three or four people and you're going to share it and you're going to go around the room uh, and you're giving feedback about um, you know, what, was, what was inspiring to you. Mm -hmm. So like at Room 214, you know, everybody participates in this process in creating the vision uh, in writing, doing the hot pen technique all of that. So what happens um, after you get the feedback? It's shared, then what? Oh, well, you, consol well, you consolidate it, mm -hmm. right? And so the feedback, the key thing in terms of feedback, and we always say this for any kind of feedback, uh, if you're asking for feedback and you're doing nothing with it, shame on you. Yeah. Uh, it's like a waste of everyone's time, right? Um, so of course, like the feedback is you know, an individual who participates in this process, and for our 20, uh, 20 vision, of course, everyone did. Uh, we put as much feedback into that vision. So when an individual now hears it, they hear their feedback in it. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, their DNA now, their feedback, which we consider a part of the DNA, their DNA is now in our vision. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really important to, as the vision writers who are going to consolidate it, to really listen to that feedback, to take a moment and then understand where that can be incorporated. Of course, you're not taking all, every feedback. You know, but. Right. But I, and when you think about like, OK, wow, this this visioning process isn't just with like, you know, the president of the company sitting down, you know, with a drink late at night when you're including a lot of people. Um, now you're talking about a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. And so. Why? Why do we do all this work? Yeah. Why create a vision? Why? I mean, you know, what's ultimately, you know, what are the benefits of it? 
Yeah, the benefit of a vision is, I mean, I, I liked, you know, we had uh, we had one employee who basically said, I like it because it feels like we're all rowing together. So essentially, you know what I mean? That's like alignment, right? Mm -hmm. And so when people know uh, what we are trying to achieve, like specifically, like everybody's on board with where we're going, you know, it actually provides you the ability to say no quite frequently. And one of the problems that businesses get into is trying to do too much. Um, and so you might say, does this align with our vision at all? And if the answer is no, it's, it's an easy response to someone who really wants to go do something. Uh, we can say it just doesn't align with our vision at all. And so, you know, everyone who contributes, there's alignment to it. And then the one thing that we love that, you know, we learned from Paul that, uh, at Zingerman's is it helps carry you through the zone of blame and doubt. Um, so the reality is, is like organizations will take on initiatives, um, be it, you know, we actually work with organizations that are taking on marketing initiatives. Uh, you start at one point, um, and then we, I, we like to talk about it as you're crossing a frozen pond. You know, typically what happens is people in the zone of blame and doubt, Ooh, it's kind of thin in the middle. Why don't we turn around and go back? Or why do we ever start this? That doesn't make any sense. And, and it's at that point in time, you actually ask yourself in the people in the room, do you say, do we still believe in the vision? And if someone says, if you say yes, if you collectively agree, we believe in the vision, you go through, uh, you mm -hmm. cross to the other side of the lake. And so the only thing that really carries you through that zone of blame and doubt and keeps you from going back to the wrong shore is vision. Uh, so if you agree upon it, you can align it. And it's, it's actually one of the more energizing parts of the entire process when you get to, when you get to there, because you will get there. Yeah. You will enter the zone of blame and doubt. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. All right, cool. Well, um, hopefully this is helpful. That's that's really it for today. And I appreciate you. Uh, you know, the steps are all here walking us through it. Um, I encourage each of you to create a vision, whether that's for your business, whether it's for your personal life. Um, before we take questions, I do want to say uh, join us again. Uh, if any of this was interesting to you uh, and you want to learn more, definitely uh, subscribe to our Digital Trends Report. Uh, you can pick that up at room214.com slash digital dash trends. Uh, and you can also join us every Wednesday at 11.15 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, so um, I know I'm just going to access our, our 214 Live Slack channel here because I do believe there are questions. Um, and here we go. How specific do you want a vision to be? Should I be setting detailed goals from Canon? I'll take that. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. So I think the shorter the vision time frame, the more specific you want to set those detailed goals. So if you're if you're doing something that's a week out, people want to know what exactly are we trying to achieve? Like what what are the particular goals? Um, and so that you know that helps really create the alignment and make sure people are are delivering because you don't have that much time. Um, if you're writing an eight year vision, um, the exact details of what it, you know to the tenth degree or a certain percentage rather than a range. Um, might be a little much, uh, you know, it's just like you just want to make sure that uh, what you're doing, again, as we mentioned, is strategically sound and if what you're writing in there, uh, you know, you can put like simple goals in there, but we put things, you know, we put number values and things, mm -hmm. but, you know, it wasn't something that um, if we didn't achieve it or felt like we were really far off the mark, it, it wouldn't necessarily be a, a, a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, and then let's just do one more for the sake of time. Um, have you had to adjust a vision in your experience? How did you go about it? That's a, well, okay, we're in digital marketing, <laughs> and so we're never the same agency year to year, and there's so many different things that come up. And so one is that's understanding the, you know, considering what environment are you in? Is it ever changing? Uh, so uh, we've had to change uh, visions uh, over a period of time. And a lot of times it comes up in that, zan, that zone of blame and doubt question. Do we believe in the vision yeah. anymore? Mm -hmm. And uh, and sometimes we'll be like, this doesn't make sense. I mean, the world has changed. Uh, so then it's like, okay, what adjustments you know should we be making then? And then what path you know, will we be going on? So yeah, there's opportunities to go back and and look at the vision you just don't you know blindly follow something because it was you know it was written right and and you know i mean what precedes alignment uh you know the phrase we like to use around here from from our friends at conversant is uh, align deeply act quickly and adjust often uh, and so the vision is really about that deep alignment that allows us to act quickly um, but ultimately we should feel invited to adjust often and, and actually another practice that we do 
um, is when we write our vision at the top, we label it draft. Yeah. Uh, and that is to say, yeah, we can align deeply around this, but ultimately this document is not set in stone. Uh, so it's great to be able to revisit it and say, yes, do we still believe in this? So cool, man. Hey, yeah, thanks man. for joining. Yeah, dude, it's great. Right on. Okay, yeah, so uh, that's it. Hey, everybody, uh, again, please join us. Uh, hopefully every Wednesday at 11.15 a.m. Also, if you'd like to get in touch with me, give feedback, uh, any suggestions for this show, you can actually schedule a call with me at your convenience. Uh, just go to calendly.com slash Jason Cormier. We'll both get calendar invites. Super simple. Um, yeah, thanks for joining Room 214 Live. Thank you.